Hello YouTubes, I recently announced that I would be postponing my Sunday night live stream so that I could concentrate on building my layout. So let's get to it, starting with my railway station. Now, when I say railway station, I don't just mean the station because, as you can see, that building is complete. The bus terminal is complete. I mean this whole area, starting with lights. Now, I have pre-wired the underside for droppers. And as you can see, my Tim Hortons has got lovely lights, thanks to my lovely wife that converted the Dairy Queen into Tim Hortons. She also 3, 3D printed this lovely sign, which is just fantastic. So let us continue today with lights in the station building and the bus terminal. Now, thanks to Stephen David at First Plays, I have a fairly gigantic selection of LEDs and little cable connectors to choose from. So let's have a look at the building first and see what lights we're going to use and where we're going to stick them. So my lovely wife built this station for me. In fact, she's built all the buildings you've seen in the layout so far. And I did ask if she wouldn't mind not attaching the roof section yet because I did want to add lights. So let's have a wee look at this before we take the roof off and figure out where we're going to put all the lights. Obviously there's going to be interior lighting, but I do fancy some lights on the underside along here. Maybe, maybe three there and maybe one in the corner. Not sure how far round we want to go, but the back end of the station where it actually faces onto the trains, possibly needs some under eave lighting as well. So maybe one, two, three, four at the back, because we will be seeing the back end of this once the layout is more complete for videos and maybe even live streams in the future. So that will be the outside. We'll be using some little LED. Let's take this off for now, it's just annoying me. So there'll be micro LEDs there. How many did I say? Three. So one there, one there, one there, one there, possibly two, and then about four at the back. So I could drill little holes and poke them through, but they are so fine. I might get away with just sticking them to the surface, running the wires that way, or drill a tiny little hole just for the wires. We'll see. We'll see. So that will be the, the roof lighting. Interior lighting, hmm, this is going to be a wee bit tricky because I don't actually have anything to attach the light strips to other than this. I, mean, I could actually just do two light strips, one there, one there. They are quite bright anyway, and by the, by the time they get down to the surface, that could be fine. I don't have any interior yet. I might just put some random people standing about. As far as where the wiring is going... There's a big block here, which no one's going to see, so I might as well do the wiring all the way down there, and I've just broken off some downspouts, so I need to glue them back on. Sorry, wifey. Right, now we need to choose some bulbs. Let's have a rummage in here. I think I'm going to go for a more of a bright white for the interior. It's a sort of modern station. So I do have a pack of these little micro bright white LEDs. I think I've got enough to do the outside there. I'm going to have to buy more of these. They are dirt cheap, by the way. And for the interior, for the strip lighting, that's a warm white, denoted by the white and the yellow. But I want the bright white, which is that one, which is just a white dot. So a couple of strips of them, some micro LEDs, and we can sort out the connectors later. But the first thing is, Let's get all our lighting in place. Now I do have to bear in mind that I'll be powering all my lights in this section with a 14 volt track controller. Now the strip light has already got a resistor to stop the LEDs blowing, but they're 12 volts, so they might be a wee bit bright. I don't need to use the full power in the track controller. But these little micro LEDs do not have resistors and they're only like two and a half volts. So I'm going to have to add quite a few resistors to them. Or maybe just one, depends how I wire them up. Right, let's see how we get on. Let's start by just marking where we want the lights or at least where we want 
the lights that we really need position. For example, just underneath that door there, I think I would like a light there. And let's see, there's another door just there, down there. So let's have a wee light there and one in the corner. So that's three there. And then we'll go, my goodness, I don't want to overdo it, but I think it'll be worth it. So we've got, there's another door there, by the way. So a light above that door, one in the corner, and then on the far side, we have, obviously we need one there. And then we can, let's see, one there, one in the corner, basically one in every corner. And then maybe one in the middle of each side there and there. Okay, we can take the roof off now. Move that out the way. Just make sure we've got them all. So one there, 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 there. Oh goodness, five on that side. One in the middle, one there, there, there. One in the corner. And one there. Oh my goodness. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Plus our strip in the middle. I wonder if we should just do one strip. I think one strip in the middle is going to be fine. I think two strips. i tell you what we'll do. Let's have a wee look at how many lights we actually get. Now with these light strips you have three LEDs and each set of three is cuttable. So I could cut that there and those three would work and each three has its own little resistor. So they come in sets of three. So we could potentially put Three sets would actually fit quite nicely along the middle. I think that's going to be bright enough. We, let's start with that. If it's if it's not bright enough, we can add we can add another one. But I think I think that's going to be plenty. So what do we do first? Do we decide? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to drill through. There's not going to be enough access because these are going to be too close to this angle here. So I'm just going to have to glue them, but what I'll probably do, let me find one bulb and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is one of our micro LEDs. As you can see, it is very tiny. So that can get glued on there. And what I might just do is just cut a little notch directly on this ridge so that the wire can sit flush. So we're not pinching the wire when we put the roof back on. So let me go ahead and glue all of these little lights Cut the little notches and then we can proceed to the, the, can, the hooking them all up. Plus I'll also glue my strip light on there. Actually before I do the, the strip light what I'll probably do is add just a little bit of wire to the end of the strip light so that we get something to connect to. Lots to do, let's get on with it.
Well, that's all my micro LEDs stuck down and I have half the glue in my fingers. Anyway, I was gonna be a bit cross-eyed by then, they're so small. Okay, I've added the wires to my LED light strip, so I just need to stick that down to the roof section and then we can put all the positives together, all the negatives together and add a plug. Simples, right? Oh, resistor. Hopefully this double-sided tape will work this time. I haven't had a great deal of success with this tape. However, it is going on to smooth plastic. So with a bit of luck, if I can ever get the backing off, it will work just fine in this instant. Come on. Oh my goodness. The worst part of the job, getting this stuff off. Ah, come on. There we go. Work, work. Yes. And I want the wires on the right hand side so that they will go into the hidden cavity. So let's see, that is going right in the middle. Oh, that's sticking nice. Like that, perfect size, absolutely brilliant. So I need to put all the positives of the micro LEDs together, all the negatives together. And on one side of the positive and negative of the micro LEDs needs to go a resistor. I am opting for a 2200 ohm resistor. I'm wiring these in parallel. If I was to wire them all in series, then that just makes life way too complicated. And believe it or not, there might not be enough voltage to light them all if I wire them in series. So as I say, all the reds are going together, all the blues are going together, and then 2200 ohm resistor. And then with these two wires coming from the LED strip, they don't need a resistor because they've got built-in resistors. So let's wire it all together, find a little plug with a bit of cable, and we will be done with this section and we can stick it on the roof. I mean, this is the roof. We can stick it on a building, plug it in. Oh no, we need to add a feeder. Right, let me get all this wiring connected first and try and tidy it up somehow. Hold on, I've had a brainwave. Instead of trying to connect all this spaghetti together, how about we create a couple of bus bars using these old Athern Blue Box power connector bars that go along the top of the locos that I'm not using anymore. You can put one there for the positive wires, one there for the negative wires, hot glue them down there, and then we can just put all the red wires there and all the blue wires there. Simples, plus a resistor on one of the sides. You don't know about resistors. doesn't matter if they go in the positive or the negative, as long as there's somewhere that breaks that flow of electricity and DC power. Right, let me get them glued down and all these wires stuck to them. Awesome. And my station light wiring is done. 
Now to the untrained eye, this might look like a complete disaster. <sighs> However, it is in fact a complete disaster. Right, let me explain what's going on here then. Bearing in mind, you're not going to see any of this. It's tucked inside the roof section, you know, and you can't see the top. Let's keep filling it. So this will be your DC power coming in, positive and negative. Gets to this point, splits off. One side goes to the positive bus bar. But first, it goes through a little 2200 ohm resistor, okay? So that's restricting the amount of power that's going to that bus bar. And then all the positives, all the LEDs are hooked up to that bus bar, okay? The other side of that positive goes to the strip light, which has got its own resistors. And the negative also splits off, one side going to the negative of the strip light and the other side going to this bus bar where it connects to the negative of all the LEDs. This side is half of this plug situation. So all I have to do, drill a hole in my layout, drop them down to the bus wires from the, the 14 volt DC power block on the underside. So let's do that and we'll be almost done. Right, I need to drill a hole through from about, let's go there. And this is going through three inches of foam and half an inch of plywood. So I need quite a big drill bit like this. And my wire should fit all the way down. Flawlessly, I've got, no, yes, all the way down. And then all I have to do is get underneath, hook up those two wires to my corresponding positive negative bus bars underneath, and we'll be ready to get my station back in and plug it in. Okay, my plug is now hooked up to the power. Let's plug it into my station, see if it works. Wish me luck. So we'll put our base on first. We'll get our roof, plug that in there, mate. Oh, knocked another gutter thing off. I'm going to be busy with the glue. Anyway, make sure your black and red are the right way around. Plug that in there. All good so far. So this is going to get tucked just in this end here where you can't see through. Well, if you really try. Oh no, that's not a window. We're good. Place you down there. Oh, you go all the way up to there. And I've got one last bit to go on, the bit that goes here, where it's there. That goes there. Bob's your auntie. Here we go. Let's give it some power. Wow, that's nice. Oh, that's really nice underneath. I know you can't see it from up there. I'll show you in a second. So it's really bright on the inside now. So I'm going to have to add some interior. In fact, I might even dull it down a little bit because you can barely see my, my underside lighting there. Which <laughs> it does actually look really nice. Tell you what, let's switch off that big light and see what it looks like compared to Tim Hortons at night time, okay? Okay, there we go then. It is it is a wee bit too bright. So I'm going to add another resistor to the strip light just to dull that down a little bit. Because I do like how the side lights are shining down the side of the building. But because those lights are so bright, it's dulling down the effect on the camera. So let me quickly change that. And you'll see it in its full glory at the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I'm glad I get this done. Still need to do the bus terminal, but now I know that one strip is more than bright enough. So one strip with a resistor for the bus terminal and that section will be done. Take care everyone. See you soon. We're getting there. We're getting there.